I'm here with Steve Watt at Red Hat Summit here in Boston, Massachusetts. And multi-cluster is, is something that, that is the product area you focus on within Red Hat. Can you talk about that? Yeah, sure. It's a, it's a pretty exciting time. You know, I think that uh, historically, you know, we've had scale-up architectures and we've had scale-out architectures. And um, now that with Kubernetes, we've moved to a architecture that allows you to run all kinds of workloads with one distributed system platform. And now we're starting to say, okay, well, that's great. We've got a great solution for my one data center. But what if I have a Kubernetes cluster in this data center and another cluster in that data center, one in the cloud, one on premise? How do I manage all of those? And so Kubernetes has been great to reduce cluster sprawl within a single data center. But now that we've started to go full hybrid with these clusters all over the place, we need a way to be able to manage them from a central place. And that's sort of the area that I work on. Okay, so how do you manage those from a central place? So um, there is a technology in the Kubernetes project called Kubernetes Federation. And what this does is it gives you a master to basically add all the different clusters that you've got into a cluster registry and then basically be able to do application placement across those different clusters. Um, this is good, but Kubernetes is sort of a compute solution. It's got a lot of wonderful abstractions um, for all different kinds of you know, network aspects and storage, abstract, storage um, abstractions, but um, it doesn't actually provide the implementations for that. So Red Hat, being the hybrid cloud company and OpenShift being our enterprise Kubernetes distribution, um, what we've done is paired that with our, our network technologies and our storage technologies and put together a comprehensive solution that we're working on that basically addresses the whole problem space that gives you single plane of glass to be able to manage it all. That is an active area. It's not product yet, but something we're actively working on. And so from a storage perspective, what does that enable for the uh, end customer? So, so this is really interesting, right? So I just mentioned that there weren't the embodiments, right? They're the abstractions in Kubernetes, but not the embodiments. And so in our storage portfolio, we have um, solutions for file, block, and object, which are different persistence patterns that are used within um, Kubernetes. And so basically, whether your application's using, you know, persistent volume of some kind or an, a, an object in an in a object store, um, what we need to do is basically take those and be able to replicate those to other storage implementations across the different clusters. Like, um, as an example, right, our customers will often ask us for a disaster recovery solution. So they've got their primary running say on premise and maybe their backup is in a different location um, or their secondary is in a different location and so while it can be very easy to move the containers that run from one place to another you leave all the data behind and so what you want to do is basically be able to replicate the data from the primary to the secondary cluster whether it's file block or object um, so that when it moves you can reconstitute the whole application and so um, Red Hat had an acquisition last year, Nuba. Um, that is one technology that we're working into the mix. Um, Nuba is a very interesting technology around object storage replication. Gives you a single namespace API endpoint to work, work on. And, um, and then basically under the covers, it can replicate things to different locations. So that's one aspect that we're exploring. Um, the other is you know, with Ceph, our standard software-defined storage platform. Even actually, if you look at Red Hat Summit last year, uh, Keynote 4, you actually got to see us use a different pattern where we stretched a volume across several cloud providers so that you could write data to one location and it was immediately available in others. So there are a couple of different ways that we're going about it. We want to give our customers a, um, a toolbox of solutions because it's really meant to address a broad set of use cases. That's pretty cool. Yeah, All right. it is. It's fun. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. All right, you're welcome.